So I've wanted to make this video for quite a while because one of the comments I get asked the most in my male gaze video is, is there a female gaze? And this is almost always followed by citations of Magic Mike. But this isn't exactly accurate, it's not a, an example of the female gaze. Because it's not simply a case of turning this into this. So in this video, I'm going to try and unpick what is actually meant by the female gaze, what it means for the future of uh, women in film, and where you can find examples of it. So for those of you who haven't actually seen my male gaze video, I strongly recommend you do that first, just to give yourself a bit of context. But in a nutshell, it's this. Male gaze refers to the way that women are represented in the media, usually from the perspective of the male viewpoint or gaze. And the reason for this is obvious. It's really because most of the people in the media historically are male and it's been tailored for a male audience. So therefore the female gaze is the opposite. It takes into account how the world is seen through a female pair of eyes. Now where the male gaze is very easy to define by the way that it objectifies and sexualizes women, it's much harder to define a female gaze because it's just not had the time to develop. Bear in mind, since cinema began at the start of the 20th century, it's been men making movies, not women. So we've got to look for those rare examples of where women were the cinematographers and the producers and the directors to try and understand what it actually means. Even now in the 21st century, women only make up about 10% of directors and 4% of cinematographers. So now that we know what female gaze literally means, what does it actually look like in film? Well, I can tell you what it doesn't look like. It isn't a case of objectifying men, just as the male gaze objectifies women. That in itself completely justifies the need of any kind of objectification at all, and makes it seem like the only problem with this is that women aren't getting their equal share of eye candy. Now that's not to say that there aren't examples of when men are objectified, of course there are. What I'm saying is there are proportionally way, way, way fewer instances of this than when women are objectified. And when you do see men objectified, it tends to glorify their body like this. Likewise, the female gaze isn't simply a case of putting a female lead in the film. This has been done loads and it still objectifies them in the likes of uh, Lara Croft. It's still kind of showing what men might want to see in a woman. So we know what the female gaze isn't, so what is it? It really is quite difficult to define if I'm honest because it's so much in its infancy. What we do know is it's being used as a device to force audiences to experience the world from the female perspective. And therefore it's actually got a huge amount of power in terms of the feminist movement. So unlike the male gaze, which is very clearly defined as the heterosexual view of women in the world, the female gaze is actually more to do with diversity and offering more perspectives on the world than just that of the male. So in which case, let's take a look at a film that was made by a woman and how it offers a fresh perspective on the female experience of the world. The example I want to look at is Cracks by female director Jordan Scott. In this film, we are presented with an all-girls school where an exotic new teacher captures the attention of the other students, and more disturbingly, the adult swimming coach. The major theme here is forbidden sexuality and jealousy in a historical context. So what doesn't the camera do? There's some nudity in this film, and yet the lens doesn't objectify or reduce the role of females to spectacle. Here the camera is being used to communicate the emotions, the struggles, the issues of sexuality and femininity by using shots like this to show intimacy, vulnerability. The end result here is a fresh perspective, a female perspective that is all too absent in mainstream cinema and offers a window into the feminine experience. Now, just like Mulvey's work on the male gaze, which says that there are three factors in the gaze, that of the filmmaker, that of the audience, and that of the characters, we could also look at how female characters are represented in texts made by women. Now, a great example of this, albeit from a male director, is in the show Mad Men. And there's this great scene when the audience is literally placed in the perspective of a young female secretary who is literally being drooled over and gazed at lustfully by every single male member of staff in the building. In this scene, the female gaze might be used as a cinematic technique to illustrate a feminist perspective on how women are treated in the workplace and possibly enact change. The audience literally being put into the perspective of the female character here is very, very powerful. 
So how should we summarize the male and female gaze and the representations of gender in the media? I think there is a bigger drive than ever to enable female gazes and in doing so, we will see more of an alternative to the male gaze, which will highlight its flaws all the more. I mean, a great example of this was in the news recently where ITV um, announced that they were dropping all male writing teams for their comedies, a huge step forward for diversity. Ultimately, I really like what female cinematographer Natasha Breyer had to say about gazes and starting to think about the individual's gaze rather than classifying it by gender. She said, I think there is such a thing as the male gaze, as per Laura Mulvey's theory, and that gaze, if you talk strictly about cinema only, has more than a hundred years of monopoly. The female gaze, if there is such, never had the opportunity to truly develop and become something we can analyze. I think every cinematographer has their own unique gaze, technical skills, and style regardless of their gender. So that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'd love to know your perspective on this topic. If you're looking for where to go next, I'd recommend you check out my video on Laura Mulvey's male gaze theory. Or if you're more interested in how to start analyzing cinematography, you can watch a video I've made on that right here. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.